instrument, we've drawn two different two-dimensional drawings, we've planned out the dimension and the rest. So we are going straight to 3D and trust me, this is the real deal. Okay, so now you know how we got to this place. So we are in our AutoCAD environment. This is where we always start from. Then one thing about two-dimensional, three-dimensional drawings is that we require different sets of tools for 3D modeling. And if you look at this drawing environment now, it's basically for 2D. So the first step we're going to take is we're going to open the 3D drawing environment. That's the first step. And it's in that environment that we are going to see tools that can enable us draw 3D. So I'll come to this place and look at my workspace switching. So I'm going to click on it. You see that by default, when you just install and open your AutoCAD, it's in drafting and annotation. And drafting and annotation basically enables you to draw two-dimensional objects. So we have 3D basics and 3D modeling. So we are going to switch to 3D modeling. <coughs> Excuse me, you can also do two, um, 3D drawing with 3D basics, but you don't have complete tools in the 3D basics. So we switch directly to 3D modeling. Okay, so my 3D modeling workspace has opened and you can see that the two bars are completely different. Now I have completely different sets of tools. Okay, so we just go through them quickly. We have modeling. This modeling con contains tools that would enable us perform 3D modeling. Now, I, I want to expand. Okay, let, we have box. This is for... Now, this place where I have box, I can expand on it. So, you see, these are standard geometrical forms. Box, cylinder, cone, sphere, pyramid, wedge, and the rest. So, these are standard geometrical forms. Okay? Now, if I want to draw a box, I'm going to pick the box to, and then I'm going to follow through the command line and then follow the information in command line. And uh, the same thing applies to cylinder, the same thing applies to cone. I'll come back to it later. I just want to rush through it at this first instance. Then we have basic one, two, three, four. We have four basic 3D modeling tools. We have extrude, loft, revolve, sweep. So these are the tools that will convert your 2D drawing into a three dimensional model. I'm going to concentrate on it later. So I just want to rush through, like I said, we have the mesh. Okay, so we have the mesh. Um, we have our solid editing. So these are normally we have our normal editing, but since we're going to be dealing with solids now, so there are extra tools we need to edit solids, and we have them here. Now, this is our normal draw to the one we've always used for our 2D. This is our normal draw to where we have line, circle, polyline, and the rest. And this is our normal modified. But this time around, we have a little addition because of 3D. So you can see this is 3D mirror. This is 3D align. So these are the new additions because of 3D. Okay? Aside that, these other ones are the normal modified tools we've been dealing with. Trim, rotate, move. They are the normal 3D um, tools we've been looking at before. Okay, so there are so many other things. So, but I'm not going to go through all of this now. As we progress, we are going to get all of this. Okay, now, there's one thing I like doing, and then I will also love you to do the same. There's one thing I like doing anytime I want to start a, a 3D drawing. Now, 3D drawings are a bit complicated. They're not as easy as 2D. So, there's what I always love to do, and it, it helps me a lot. I believe that when you start drawing, you see the importance too. Now, I want to share this, my workspace, into four. I want to share it into four. Now, the idea is, I want, at any point when I'm drawing an object, I want to be seeing the front view of that object. I want to be seeing the side. I want to be seeing the top. And I also want to be seeing it in isometric at the same time. So this is going to help me make better judgment about the drawing. So now I'm going to share my workspace into four. So I'm going to come to visualize. I'm going to come to visualize and I'll look for, okay, this is viewport configuration. So by default, it's in single viewport. I'm going to expand on it and I'm going to select four equal. Now you can see I have four different viewports. So my screen is divided into four. Now I can draw in each of these viewports. Now, these are not different drawing environments. It's the same drawing environment. Whatever action I am taking in one, it's also showing in the, other, in the other three. So it's the same drawing environment. The only thing is that I decide the view of the object I want to see in each viewport. Okay, you can look at... Now, look at this viewport. This viewport has blue edges, shiny blue edges. Can you see? It means it's the active viewport. 
it means it's the active viewport. Now, how do I activate? Any whenever I'm drawing, even if I could, I keep my cursor here and I'm drawing. I am drawing on the active viewport. So whenever I want to use a viewport, the first thing I'm going to do is to activate it. How do I activate? I just click, left click. So if I want to use this viewport, I just come to it and let's click. So the first click, I, I click in a viewport, activates it. Then the next one, I can now start doing whatever I want to do. So you can see the same thing with this. So anytime I want to do perform any operation on a viewport, I have to activate it first. And that activation is just the left click. Okay, now you'll notice that I had just have my grid lines in one viewport. The rest are blank. So I'm going to activate each viewport and on the grid line. So I'll activate this on the grid line, activate this on the grid line, okay? So that's it, so I have my grid line in all of them. Now, I want to set them for different views, unset them for different views. So look at, if you activate a viewport and come to the top left corner, if you activate a viewport and come to the top left corner, you discover that you have um, the view there and then the visual style, that's 2D wireframe. So I have top, to the wireframe. You're not going to see it on any other viewport except I activate. So if I come to this place and activate, you're going to see it also. Okay, so now I'm going to leave this in the top. So whatever I'm drawing, the top view of that stuff will be displaying here. Okay, so below it, I'm going to make it the front view. So I'm going to click on that top to change it. If I click on the top and it expands, I'm going to select front. Good. So I have front. So whatever I'm drawing, the front is going to show here. Now, this since this is to the right of my front, I'm going to make it my right view so i'm going to make this my right view and then this last viewport here i'm going to put it in isometric so that while these other viewports are showing me my drawing in 2d this one will be showing me the exact three-dimensional shape of that object at any point in time so i'm going to click on it i have different isometric options this is southwest isometric southeast isometric northeast isometric northwest isometric so i'm just going to choose one of them my let me just say uh, we can use southeast isometric okay so this is my southeast isometric so you can see the way it is uh okay let me check let me check um northeast i want it to display the normal x y direction that we are used to let's check southwest x y z and maybe let's check northwest okay so we are going to use <coughs> southwest or southeast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's use southwest. I want the Y to be up. I want the Y to be up. I want the Y to be up. That's what I'm looking for. I want I want the Y to be off. Okay, since I can't get it, so let me let's go back to my southeast isometric. Because say, okay, so I'm okay with this. So we use our southeast is isometric. So what I'm saying in essence is that on this viewport you're going to be seeing the top view of whatever we are drawing. On this viewport, you're going to be seeing the front view of whatever we are drawing. On this viewport, you're going to be seeing the... This is right. I don't know how it got. So this is right. Say so good. So on this viewport, you're going to be seeing the right. And on this viewport, you're going to be seeing the south. It's isometric. So we go through it again. Top, front, right, isometric, south is isometric. So... Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, you can see this is a wireframe, this is a wireframe, this is a wireframe. Now, for this one that is going to be showing us the object in isometry, I want to give it a more realistic view. So, I'm going to make it, um, we could use, let's use conceptual. So, we are going to give it a conceptual view so that it will have that solid feel, okay? Yes, we want to do it in a way it's going to have that solid feel when you look at it. So, we leave one, two, three in 2D wireframe. And then we keep this one in conceptual. Okay, so this is it. So we are done with setting our viewports. Then we can start drawing. Now, whatever you want to draw, now you it views are very, very important in 3D drawing. If you want to draw an object, you must know what to draw in each viewport. I don't know if you get what I mean. What you need to be sure of what you are drawing in each viewport. Like for the top viewport, you should know that whatever you are drawing, that it should be a feature that is on the top plane. So if I pick a feature that is supposed to be on the top plane and I draw it in the front plane, I will get the shape eventually, but it's going to be rotated in a direction that I don't want. And then I'm going to start struggling to rotate it again, to rotate it again when I'm done drawing. So that's going to be too much of 
stress for us. Okay, so we go back. I want to go back to home. All right, so since we have set these reports, let me now show you what happens with these, our um, 3D objects. So we're going to start with box. Okay, so I'm going to select a box. I come to my top plane, say specify first corner. So I'm going to click as the first corner of the box. Specify other corner, I'm going to click again. Don't worry, I'm not drawing with dimension now. As you mean, I was drawing with dimension, I'll be particular about dimension, but I'm not drawing with dimension now. So I'll just keep anywhere. Then the third corner, this is the height and my box. Now, let's look at these three viewports. I drew on the top, so you are seeing the top. Let me activate the front view, and then I'll, I'll see it's hidden. So I'm going to adjust it, bring it to the middle, yes. So I want to bring this again to the middle. Can you see this? And then I'm going to bring this to the middle. Now, can you see this? Now, this is what I mean by activating three, um, four viewports. Now, you can see that I have a box. I have drawn a box. And I am seeing different views of this box in, diff in the different viewports, okay? Now, you may not appreciate this too much because the box basically has the same shape all around. Cuboid, um, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Let's use another shape. Let's pick a cylinder. Now I pick the cylinder. I want the circle of the cylinder to be in the plan. Like I want the cylinder to be standing. So I'm going to draw the circle in the plan again. So specify center point of base. That's when you miss. I'm going to activate this. Remember I said the first click is for activation. And I'm going to select the center. Then the circle of the cylinder. I'm not interested in dimension. This is 5.1247. So I'll just leave it like that. I'm just trying to demonstrate how the cylinder tool works. Now I select it. Now I'm done with the circle. Now the next movement is for the height. Can you see it? Now this is the height of the this thing of the cylinder. So I can adjust. If I want to enter a particular height, I'll just enter it on my keyboard. But I'm just drawing freehand. So I'm going to adjust it and then I'll drop it. Okay, again. Can you see this? Now we go again. Look at the top view. Can you see? For the cylinder, the top view gives you a circle. The front view gives you a rectangle. Don't mind the line in between, it's because it's a solid. Now, the right view also give you, gives you a rectangle. Now, it's coinciding with my, it's coinciding with my box. Because look at the isometric, and you can see that if you view from the right side, you see that the cylinder is standing in front of the box. That's why they are, they are intersecting here. So, okay, I'm going to move this away a little. So, I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this out of, okay. So, I'm just going to move it out a little. Okay. Now, we come back. Can you see what we have here? Uh -huh. So, I'm moving it. I want to I want to be seeing the two objects in the two viewports. Okay. So, you can see what we have. So, we can continue like this. And for every other shape we want to draw, we can continue like this for every other shape we want to draw. Okay. So, maybe for the last trial, let's you do the torus. Okay, it's like a donut. So again, I'm going to pick the, dor the torus. Now, where again do I want the center to be at the top? Or oh, okay, let's not let's not look like top is conventional. So I'm going to put this cent the circle at the front now. So I'm going to select center point and okay, that means I was even supposed to. Okay, we go back to that torus. Go back to that torus and. Uh, we say select center point. I don't want the circle of this to be at the, the select torus again. Okay, so I'm do the circle. Can you see the circle of the torus now? Whenever I get whatever dimension, I click again and then now I'm I'm handling the the diameter of the tube. Yes, so this adjusts the diameter of the tube. You can see the you can see the what is it called the 3D gives you an idea of what we are trying to achieve. Okay, so I'll just drop it like this. Okay, so again, I'm going to adjust so because I want to see all of it here. I want to see all of it here, and I want to see all of it here. So this is what we have in our isometric. We can always rotate this. Now, this is two dimensions, so we can always rotate this so that you get a very good view of this. Now, this is our view cube. This is our view cube. Now, I want to rotate it like this. Can you see? See the one I'm rotating. Okay, I'm going to choose another plane and rotate about it. So I'm going to rotate about this. Good. Now look at look at. So this is two. It is three dimensional object. So here we have we are at liberty to play with the object around 
anyhow we want and we can see all the respective views okay so this is it now in our next in our next class i'm going to come back and teach us how to draw objects with this extrude loft revolve and sweep one by one so bye for now i'm going to see you in my next video don't forget to like comment and share and subscribe Thank you.